Okay, we're good. All right, so is my presentation up now? Yes, we can see it. Right, beautiful. All right, well, it's great to be here today. Um, I love being a part of the Boston chapter. Um, United Spinal is dear to my heart. Um, I'm a board member of the National United Spinal Association and love all of our chapters. Um, but my name is Josh Basil, and today I'm going to be presenting on Fuel Service, uh, a new Drivers with Disabilities app that basically allows drivers the ability to not have to, or the ability to connect with local gas stations um, that would like to help fill up your gas tank without you ever getting out of your car. Um, today I'll be sharing a little bit about my journey and then also talking about the advocacy game as I see it and what we need to do to make sure we get more of these types of services in the Boston area and across the country. Amen. So my, my life changed forever in 2004. I was on a family vacation at the beach. I was 18 years old. A wave picked me up, threw me over my boogie board and slammed me on my head. That day I, I shattered my fifth cervical vertebra in my neck. Uh, I was on a ventilator for about four weeks um, when I was weaned off. Um, or during that time, I, I lost my voice. I couldn't speak with my family, couldn't speak with my friends. All, the, the only way I could communicate was by blinking. And when I regained my voice, I decided to make sure that I would never be silenced again and that every word from that moment on would have purpose. Um, so finding my voice was a, was a big moment. And, and then I started to exercise that voice. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about kind of what I did to exercise. So um, I ended up starting a foundation called Determined to Heal. Uh, we help simplify the transition for newly injured families across the country. Um, basically, whatever you need in the early days, we basically provide kind of a customized game plan of, on how to best um, navigate the, the crazy road that we all have gone on. Um, and I ended up uh, found, uh, founding SpinalPD.com. I hope you guys have been to the website, but we basically provide mentoring services for newly injured families through videos. Um, you put your exact functionality in, and then right now we have about 18,000 videos broken down by functionality. So you put your movement in and you have anywhere from 500 to 1,000 people showing you what's possible within your unique world. Um, after my injury, I went to community college. Then I went to undergraduate at University of Maryland. And then I went to law school and I graduated uh, magna cum laude without ever flipping a page uh, with my fingers. Uh, I gotta love technology. Um, I'm a board member of United Spinal. I'm an avid adventure seeker. Uh, do a lot of disability employment mentoring. So if anybody here wants to either pursue, secure, or maintain employment, I've helped over 500 families just during, during COVID uh, with their employment journeys. And uh, Fuel Service is another project and initiative that I'm super pumped to be behind. So after our injuries, we all have to hit the reset button. You know, a spinal cord injury changes everything. Um, uh, and with that being said, it's, you know, it does change everything. But before my injury, I got to do things one million ways. Now after my injury, I get to do it one million different ways. 1 million new ways. And it's just that perspective of being able to have a willingness to try and put yourself out there. You start finding out that there's so much fun, so many different ways of experiencing the world. And really it just takes willingness and a little creativity most of the time. One of the things that I had to relearn after my injury was the ability to drive. And you know, before my injury, I did it with my feet. After my injury, I did it with my hands. But there's a huge problem. And that was the fact that when you got to a gas station and you didn't have any finger function, there's no ability to grab the nozzle. 
So you'd go to a gas station. I would have to call the station, hope somebody would pick up. If they didn't, mm. I would have to honk my horn, hope somebody would, would come out or I could mm. kind of get a bystander's attention and then roll down the window and be like, could you please help me? And if those three things didn't work for me, I would have to drive to the next station mm. with the hope of not running out of gas. Mm. So for me, I've become very good at advocating for myself since finding my voice, whether it's through the work that I do with United Spinal, through the non my nonprofit, or with law school. I've, I've put up a lot of hours. I put my 10,000 hours in as an advocate and became an expert at it. Um, so I'm always about being proactive rather than reactive, recognizing the problems of that there's not you know help at the gas stations. Mm. I said, you know what, see a problem, let's find a solution. Let's then create a call to action and then power in numbers. You know, when we go down the street, mm. uh, when I go down to the street to work, you know, a few people might turn their heads and see me and be like, oh, got that guy's going to work. But if I go down the street with 20 of you by my side, every mm. single person is gonna turn their head. And that's what we have to do as a community power and numbers, we turn heads, we turn minds, and we change the way that the world sees paralysis. Mm -hmm. so, with strategizing a solution, I ended up connecting with Niall. He's a paraplegic in the UK, and he ended up de developing fuel service, and it's all over Europe, but they weren't able to get their way into the US market. Luckily with my nonprofit, I was able to connect with the largest wholesaler of petroleum in the entire country. And I went to them and said, this app can change lives. What can we do? So what we did was we started rolling it out in the US. So I'm gonna tell you first what it looks like, how it works. So everybody today, I want you guys all to download the app. And that's the first thing. All right, so you download the app, it comes on your phone, it's called Fuel Service. And you basically click find, find local stations. Mm -hmm. Then it generates all the local stations that are near you. You pick the one that you want, basically in whatever direction you're, you're going in, you select that station. And then you set, you click the green button on the left, ask for assistance. When you hit that, it then makes a phone call to the gas station. A driver with a disability is 15 minutes away. It picks you up basically on what your location is. So it knows based on that GPS, how long it will take you to get there. It says a driver with a disability is 15 minutes away. Press one if you can help them. Press two if you cannot. If they press two, they cannot, then it notifies you and you select the next station that you want. And then and once they pick one, it, then it, it then lets you know to proceed to that gas station. When you arrive, you go to, let's say there's nine pumps. You go to the one that you want. You call, you click, I've arrived. It then asks you to put the pump number in. So you say, I'm at pump number four. Uh, and it calls the station again, it picks up, the driver disabilities arrived, they're at pump number four. Uh, how long will it take you to get out? And the reason why they ask that question is sometimes in the store they might have two people in line. So they wanna make you know that they hit, they hit five, it'll take me five minutes to come out. Or two, it'll take two minutes for me to come out to help you. Or zero and they're coming out right now. Um, and then once they come out, they fill up your, your, your car and you're able to pay paperlessly through the app or you can give them money, your credit card, whatever you want to be able to pay, but um, it does have the option to do everything paperlessly. And then you just fill up your gas tank without getting out of your car. So, um, and then we ask for your feedback because we always want to know and strive to improve on what, on what the experiences are like. So right now we have, there's 108 uh, Shell gas stations that we put on live in the Northeast this month, um, which is very exciting. We have about 135 in the Washington DC area. We have another, I just heard it actually today, we're having another 200 going live in, uh, in June. Um, and we just, this just started this year. So the goal by the end of the year is to get a thousand gas stations live up and down the East Coast. Then we're gonna move out West, get to 10,000 and hopefully get over 100,000 stations uh, in the next few years. 
Um, so this is just the beginning. So when, when it comes to creating the call to action, my call to action today. So right now in the in the, in Massachusetts, there's about there's 15 stations live right now. Um, but I know we can do better, and I know we can get more. Mm -hmm. This is just the start. Uh, in in uh, Connecticut, I think we have about 50 stations okay. live. Um, yeah. but the goal today is to get everybody to download the app. And if, it's, if there's any stations near you, um, test it out. See if it works for you. Use the app. Provide feedback. If you know other Shell stations that are near you, we were able to secure a global contract with Shell where every single station in the world can have access to, to uh, fuel service. They believe in it so much that they made a global deal to make this happen, which is amazing. So if there's local Shell stations, let me know and we can try to get them uh, um, onboarded and, 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 and ready to go for you. So that, that, um, that, 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 that icon that you saw on the last screen, whenever you go on to, let me try to go backwards. So this icon right here on the bottom right, if you go to the Google App Store or the Google Play, um, you can just see that app, type in fuel service, and that's that's the one you're gonna wanna look for. So from a testimonial standpoint, people are absolutely loving this. It's saving them so much time um, at, from the experience of previously having to fill up, whether you're a paraplegic, quadriplegic, and this is an app for anybody with a disability and even persons without disabilities. We're, we're making it so that even if you're, you know, if you're a parent and you you have a child with a disability and you don't want to have to get out of your car because you want to stay with them, this app's for you. Let's say if you're a senior citizen or I have troubles um, filling up your tank, this app is for you. Anybody with differing abilities that have any issues uh, with filling up their tank and they need help, that's what this app is for. And obviously in the spinal cord community, uh, there's all this app is a perfect app for us. Um, and the, another thing is some people are using this to get food inside. So when they fill up their tank and somebody is uh, comes out to help, they ask the, the gas station attendant, could you please buy me, buy me or get me a, and a, a bag of Doritos? And they go out and get it for you rather than having to get out of your vehicle and go into the store. So it's, there's, there's a lot of uses to this app. Right. And then the power in numbers that we're saying. We do, I, would, I, I ask every chapter to also, um, oh, I needed to fix the slide at Maryland and DC area, but this is for Northeast Boston area. But getting your friends to use the app, getting your friends to share the app, and then I would love the Boston chapter to, to sign on and as a letter of support saying that you guys are behind this and that you believe that we need to get this out to more and more people. Um, so this is my contact information, josh.basil at gmail.com. That's my cell phone number. And if I, whenever you guys need to reach me, I'm here, I'm here to help answer your questions with fuel service, with employment, with really anything at all. Um, I want to be, a, be of help. So let's now open the floor for some questions and answers. Yeah, go ahead, Mark. I saw your hand raised. Go ahead. Hi, John. Hi, hi Josh. Mark Race. Hi, Mark. Is there a cost to the vendor of the gas station? Um, so yes, if you're so it's uh it's like a dollar fifty a week to be a subscriber of the app. That's nothing. And it costs zero dollars for, um, for, for for drivers with disabilities. Yeah. And every every dollar raised uh, goes back into the spinal cord injury community. That's really great. It goes, goes to research and quality of life. What if uh, um, I, I'm going to step out on a limb here? What if you? Of course, there's going to be people that take advantage of it. How do you weed them out? Unfortunately, like you go unfortunately ahead. you can't. You'll always have abusers of systems. Yeah. And you just hope that they are 
in the minority and it's the smallest percentage possible, but people will always abuse and that's, that's on them. That's the life they, they chose to live. But we, we don't wanna make it so there's a few abusers in the system that it, it prevents us from benefiting from a service that can really transform and help our lives. Correct. Is there a, a list of things you can and you can't do? I mean, you can't buy alcohol and cigarettes? I'm, there's, I'm nothing, there's nothing to stop any of those things if, if the attendant is willing to help with those things. I see. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know what the regulations on uh, bringing uh, alcohol and, and tobacco products outside. I am a lawyer, but I don't know every jurisdiction's unique rules on that. So there might be yeah. something that would stop that, but I don't think there's rules on bringing out a Snickers bar. All right, thank you very much. Great, thanks, Mark. We'll go Linda and then Doug. Josh, um, I thought the same thing. I When you were talking about grandparents or people with kids in the car, I'm thinking if they open it up to that, then they might as well have an attendant giving gas out all the time. It really shouldn't be advertised as something for people who just don't want to get out of their car. It should be left as for people with quite disabilities that can't get out of the car. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, I, I we want it to be for anybody that needs help. I think it's important to recognize that everybody has their own unique abilities and struggles. And if, if this app can help them, we, we want it to be for, in my eyes at least, for all the, all the populations that need help. Um, it's, you know, and I think it's, it doesn't actually hurt it for us because in my eyes, being able to have more people using it then gets the attendance that much better at providing the service, that much better at picking up the phone. Um, if they know people are coming back and using the service, it, they get they get more practice at it. Well, what I was saying is, then will the the uh, gas station feel? I might as well just have a permanent attendant out there. What uh, good does self service stations do if if you have to have someone running out to a car because the app got popular and people are using it for just because they don't want to get out of their car because they have kids in the car, or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you don't think it's going to go that way, then I hope it doesn't. And I, I think that's, I, I love the way you're thinking because you're, you're, you're having that future kind of like what's, what, what could happen and how can we prevent uh, abuse, prevent anything of that sort. But I think if that does happen down the road, we can then address it then. But it's right now getting it out, using it, learning from it, making it the best product we can have for persons with disabilities, drivers with disabilities. Um, I think that's what that's what we have to do. One, one, that's one excellent. Staff, I, I used to have to call the gas stations in my sister's community. Up here, I'm lucky they pump the gas, but down in Pennsylvania, you can't get, they're all self-service. Yeah, but the yeah. guy would come out if I called ahead, and, but it saves you from, you're right. This is an excellent app. I wish I wish there was every state in the country would have full service everywhere because it's it's even with COVID and everything else, it's just it's such a valuable service to have. But um, it that doesn't exist. So we got we got to now that we have technology to leverage better communications, simplify everything. Like uh, I think the time is now to to make this happen. Yeah, my, Josh, thank you. Um, a question. I have a, there's a gas station up the street for me that it's an independent uh, and they have attendance only. Uh, it sound, they sound like a great candidate for this. Um, yeah. How can I get gas, them an application or what's the best way to go from here? Any gas station that wants to be on board, they can sign up. So um, it, uh, Heather, if you, I don't know what the best way to communicate with the group, but I can send a message after this to everybody um, and CC everybody providing my contact information. And when you have those stations, I can put you directly in contact with Niall uh, in, in the UK and he'll he'll take it from there. If you just like do almost maybe an introduction email or let's say you have like five stations 
um, you can list them out and you can then contact them if you've already spoken with them. Um, okay. and, and you're talking with, you have Shell on board now or are there other, I might have missed this, but are there other franchises that you, somebody's working on to get? Yep, we, we're, we're signing, I think in the last few months we signed deals with three other uh, major gas companies and or major but uh, smaller, medium and, and large gas companies. So we're, we're getting more and more, but Shell's the only one that has a, a, a global deal. Okay, thank you. That's great. Go ahead, Mark. Well, he almost answered my question. How did Shell happen to get in this first? Niall worked his magic. Hey, that's good. He, he got with the right people. And yep did amazing things over in Europe. And they said, you know what, we want this everywhere. And it's just, we, we all know that the, the, the disability community is the most brand loyal community. When people treat us right and care for us, uh, we love those businesses. The so word gets I, around. I just give a lot of props and respect to Shell for, for being first to the game. Thank you. Go ahead, Chris. Hi, um, I have a question for Josh and one for the group. Um, Josh, uh, thank you for spearheading this. This is great. Um, if I use the app and I'm call ahead to tell them and I go to one of the pumps, does it matter which pump I go to, whether it's specified for full service or, or self-service, does it matter at all? Or I just pick the most convenient pump and have them come most out? Most convenient pump. Most convenient. Yep. That's awesome. Uh, well, I would, I would go to the most convenient pump that's self because I think if you go to the full, you're paying an extra dollar amount for that gas, right? Ah, yep, good point, good point. And, and my question for the group is, um, does anybody tip people if they come out and help you to pump gas? There's no need to tip, that's- No need to tip. If, if you, no, nobody's ever asked me that, but I feel like if you wanna tip somebody, that, that's on you, that's, that's you, but there's zero requirements to tip and zero expectations of the attendant to receive tips. Thank you. Yeah. I, th I think the biggest tip you can give is continue to recommend it to friends and saying that this station is awesome, whatever one you go to. That's a good point. I'm big on giving feedback on in town on Facebook and I, I'd be glad to give a good word to my favorite stations. Yeah, amen, that's good. Right now, getting getting more stations in the Massachusetts area. Um, I'm I'm excited as it grows, but I, we need more and more and more. Hmm. Mary, hey, so um, so can you include Maine in that? Because I've got a couple that I like to go to in Maine, and I, I actually do get out and pump my gas. And usually by the time I'm done, I'm pretty pissed because if I haven't parked perfectly then it's like all this maneuvering, um, but I, can I, uh, you know. Every every state, okay. we, we're, we're just starting kind of, we started in the DC area, then we moved up into the kind of the Northeast area with uh, up by you guys and we're we're gonna oh. go everywhere. So I, so why, I guess my question is if, if you're, you're, um, you're, you're making this agreement with Shell, why Shell isn't willing to send like something out to all of his, companies and say you know you should do this or and so we have to do that step or I... we're, we're, we're working on that right now so the the thought process was work with wholesalers first because they work directly with stations and they can train the stations and make sure that it's done right and now we're because we did it so well with the the petroleum marketing group the one that i've worked with they're now pushing out to other wholesalers across the country this is what we learned this is how we did it and it's just the easiest way to really, you know, gather all the data points you need, all the station location information, click one button and you get them all. You can get a thousand stations with a flick of switch onboarded. Um, so it's, it's kind of how we're rolling it out to make sure we have best quality for users. But it would be great if we could just click one button and get every single shell station in the country, um, but we're, we're going to get there. Thank you. Yeah. And we can't forget about Rhode Island because, oh, Brett's gone now, but Brett was driving around earlier and he needs gas too. So <laughs> I'm just looking at the map right now. And um, 
Paul, you might have a couple choices down in your area. There's a couple of shells, one in West Yarmouth and one in Dennis. Did I lose Paul too? Paul's gone. Who's Paul? Who's Paul? I haven't I, seen Paul. Paul was here a little while ago. And then now since we got back, anyways, Paul's not, I'm just gonna, anyways. And if, <laughs> if anybody wants to go to the Cape, there are options. And then Mark, I know you're still here. So I'm gonna tell you that there's a there's one lone gas station in Wyndham. Oh yeah. And and they will pump your gas for you. Um, but yeah, there's definitely um I'm excited to see all the green dots mm. on the map you know, grow and, and uh expand. It'd be great. Me too. This could be good for the gift card market too. Shell, give it to Shell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love it. Right. Definitely. I'm just bummed I didn't think of this first. That's really all. <laughs> Jerry's got a question. Go ahead, Heather. Jerry. Yes, I believe it's cheaper at the self syrup. So, you know, after a while, we all get to comfortable with uh, gas stations. Um, so I was told that if I go to the service uh, where the gas is a little bit more expensive, if I mention, you know, hey, I'm in a wheelchair, it's difficult for me to get out and fill the gas up. They'll give it to you at the self-service price. Yes, I have it happen to me all the time. I awesome. drive up to the full service, I get self-service price. That's what I, I never knew that. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. In New Hampshire, I'm sure it happens. Mm -hmm. If you advocate for yourself, it could happen anywhere. So I know certain states like dropped full service completely. I guess in my area, Maryland, DC, and Virginia, there's zero fuel service of it, full oh. service available anymore. Well, this is a little, you know, four pump private place, but they, that's where I go. Yeah. That's and awesome. they still do it. That's awesome. No, you're awesome. <laughs> That's right. You are awesome, Josh. This is incredible. Um, and just like your entire mentality and approach to identifying a problem and then figuring out how to change it is really incredible. So thank you. Thank Ooh, you for that. And thank you for, uh, for telling us all about this and um, and we will, uh, you know, I'll talk to Doug and we can figure out how we can um, put together a letter of support from the chapter um, and also how we can spread the news too. I was thinking we just put out our, our May newsletter, but we can even get something together for June where we can spread the word on it and um, also have people uh, communicate whether they're communicating to you or um, you know, however we want to set it up so that if people have gas stations in their local area that they would like to may, uh, you know, uh, suggest that they are um, on the app, then we can have them, um, you know, suggest those. And I well. can, it would be great if we could share the video. To, I think I shared the video with you. Or Nick, Nick. Yes, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, how to use it and everything. So I can share the video with everybody and mm -hmm. uh, we, we should probably do a, a video up in the Northeast area so that it then can spread the word through, uh, through the airways. Um, yeah. Absolutely. And if, if anybody is on social media, find me on Facebook, Josh Basil, be friends and can share a lot of lot more information about employment, um, caregiving supports, government programs, you name it. It's uh, there's a lot that um, I post and, um, and check out Spinalpedia too. It's yeah. amazing. It's a great, it's a great, great page. Mm -hmm. And yep. Like this final video page. Yes, yes. Go ahead, Jerry. A quick question, Josh. Um, what about the banners and the things that I saw flying alongside the gas stations? Do you um, supply those or would the gas station have to buy those? Um, so, yeah, so the PMG and Shell uh, budgeted out some money to get those to a bunch of the stations. So, they didn't do them to all of them because some actually jurisdictions prevent you from having. Uh, objects like that and, um, outside. But uh, I, I can ask that question uh, to the team 
and we I think we have that around around 20 20 percent of the stations in the DC area have the feather flags. Yeah, if you don't know it, Jerry, you said the banners, right? Yeah, Jerry. Yeah. So I think all the stations are going to get stickers on the by the pumps to let people know. So if you do get out of your car, you'll see, oh, wow, there's a new service. And then the next time you can use it. And then there's going to be flyers inside the stores as well. But the feather flags really grab people's attention. Oh, I got a question, Josh. You're going to hate me for this. <laughs> what about electric? Electric, electric vehicles. Yeah. Uh, so you don't need gas. I know. No but <laughs> can you get somebody to put that in your car? I, I, I don't see why you couldn't. Um, the question I have is how long, how long would that take to recharge at a, I, I haven't done enough research. I don't know. Actually, I don't know. Yeah. So I just know a place. It's a little B and B that's got three chargers outside of it. Where I don't know how long it takes to charge a car, but if I couldn't do it, could somebody do it for me? I I would say yes. If that station has gas at it, you go there and you need help with something else. I think that's a reasonable request. Yeah. All right. Thank you. The the attendant always can say no, but we're in the position of. If it's reasonable, we're asking attendants to say yes. Yeah. That's what we're doing, part of that training that I was saying before. So we're, we're going, we're inviting every single one of the stations that are getting online to, to attend a training seminar with us where we teach them how this works and how to do it right, how to properly communicate with person, drivers with disabilities, um, what words to use, what words not to use, mm -hmm. how to interact with them properly. We're trying to do our best to make sure that um, they don't go in, you know, without some education of, of how to do right. this. Some, some etiquette of some type. Absolutely. Right. Right. Yeah, United Spinal, I don't know if anybody or everybody here has, they have an incredible, the, the national chapter has created this incredible guide. It's a disability etiquette guide that they created. It's, it's brilliantly done. It is. You're right. Mary, we got to get those maniacs to get up, signed up for this. So the people at the Shell station where I go to, they see me coming and the woman comes running out and she's freaking on a cane walk. And I'm like, oh my God, don't fall. But I, I mean, mm -hmm. they come running out and they want to help me. And I, I appreciate the help, but sometimes I want to get exercise. So I don't mind pumping most of the time, but I will, if I'm in a, if it's raining, I mind. Yeah. If four snowing, foot snowstorm. Yeah. I mind that, but yeah. But we'll get we'll work on them. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you again, Josh. Really appreciate yeah. it. This was awesome. Um, any other last questions for Josh or anybody else before we go for the evening? Yeah, you have that big hot thing to do at seven. That's right. So. Nobody spying on us now. Huh? <laughs> Trolling. <laughs> Awesome. All right. I'm going to stop the recording. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Have a good week. All right. Yeah.